let's recognize um, Stockholm syndrome to being literally psychologically and emotionally raped into bad thinking, wrong thinking, like Judy Krishnamurti used to talk about, you know, that's wrong thinking. And, you know, like, you know, I, I tried to raise my kids. They were taken away by uh, people that uh, were competing with me. And I didn't want to compete with them. You know, right off the bat, when they took me to Sierra Vista, you know, just live the Lord's Prayer. Right. They said it wasn't time yet. I was like, you asked me how do we avoid all the fucked up shit? Okay. So then you're saying, then you didn't, you're not interested, okay, in the answer to the question. Because if you say, if, if you ask the person that the book is about and say, how do you avoid all the fucked up shit? You sit there and say, well, you just lived the Lord's Prayer. And they say it's not time yet. Then they don't want to avoid the fucked up shit. They don't want the answer to the question. Do you understand? So, you know, Natalie was believing in me and tried to support me, right? And and, and uh, me and Patrick did our best to try to protect her from home invasion manipulation from perverts in the military. And she would do her best to try to protect us from their abuse, right? And um, there a lot of times it was very difficult because I wanted her to stay home with the kids when we were in Sierra Vista at the trailer park, Okay. And she wouldn't do that because she was being sexually manipulated and predicated on by Stephen Abrahams, that Devin guy's dad. And I would try to, I, I got very desperate. It was like, how do I get her to stay home? How do I get her to, you know, focus on what I need her to do? Because her, her, her siblings need her because she's being just like her mother. And she was always so uh, upset with her mother. Right? And I wonder, I used to tell her, I don't want you to judge Amy. I just want you to learn from her mistakes, love her, and then you know, just you, you've got better help so you can do better. Right? And it was very hard. They put me in very difficult situations. And then Patrick, they put in a compromising and difficult situation to try to help protect Natalie from their abuse of her too. Right? So, you know, I know what sick people I'm dealing with. I know how sick of a person Oprah Winfrey is. I know how sick of a person Bill Gates is. I know how sick the, the, the CEOs of uh, Intel corporations that have virtual presence through linguistics and legal contracts are. And, they, and, and I, 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 they're having difficulty because last night when I did my video last night, I got that, well, you had this moment with, oh, fuck, here we go again. So I know they're still sick because they're still getting that you did this. You were thinking this. Okay, would I have been thinking that if when they asked me how do we avoid all this shit, we live the Lord's Prayer? And they said, okay. Okay. <laughs> There's a reason why you're not the Messiah, okay? <laughs> you understand now? No, it's, they still know. They, you will go through and listen to it and they'll do, aha! And you'll be like, fuck. <sighs> shit, 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 shit. And they will do that all the time. Okay, like with Ray Ray, when she put the stuff on there and she had happy hands and her mom's proud of her and she does this thing and she does this this job that she went to college and she got her thing for and she gets and she sugars and and does this thing for people for their vanity because that's all it's for because we haven't we're not forgiving debt and trespass loving one another and eternal faithful peace okay and we don't have a healthy environment because we're driving cars that are toxic to engage in our extortion. We're asking for the Lord's Prayer. So when Natalie gets in a car, okay, and has to drive to these people's houses and put the sugar on them and help with their skin, it's just to be vain to survive the fact that you're not living the Lord's Prayer. So she goes to school for anywhere from two to four years, okay, and she has to come up with all this money to go to school to do this, right? When all she had to do is, you know what, I think the guy who raised me is the Messiah, and I love him, and I want to be what he needs me to be, because I love my Auntie Michelle. Okay. Do you understand? That's why I tell her, I love you like I love Miriam and Michelle and Edna. Okay. Because she tried to believe in me, and she wanted to believe in me, but the, 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 the perverts wouldn't let her. Okay. And then, well, you were with him. He's a pervert. That's perverts okay use linguistics to sliver you wise men say only fools rush in but i can't help okay house music falling in love or the first time i heard that i was like oh my god that doesn't sound nearly as good as elvis presley and then when they kicked in the dance hall music i was like oh okay i get it this, this is pretty cool okay but at first when they when they first Played that song and it started out with Ali. I was like, Ali does not sing as good as, as wise men say, only fools rush in. You know, Elvis 
got that nice voice, right? <laughs> but I can't tell falling in love with you. You know, like I was watching Ichabod Crane and uh, they had uh, um, his singing voice was Bing Crosby. Boom, 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 boom. And all the women would go, Ooh, you know, and Brown Bones was getting all mad because he can't sing that good. <laughs> he ain't got that voice, right? He ain't got the voice where the ladies go, oh my God, sing it again, sing it again, say it again. Talk to me some more. You know, you don't have to go. You're the poetry man. You know, some guys just have that voice. Some guys, it's like, fucking asshole, shut up. Robert Goulet, get the hell out of here. Look, look, Gary Puckett, Jim Reeves, shut the fuck up and just leave. Okay. Take one girl and get out of here. <laughs> the rest of us want a chance, right? <laughs> they have that bedroom voice. They walk in. It's, 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 um, Phoebe Snow. You give me a sultry laugh. You're the poetry man. You make the, everybody love that song. I love the shit out that song. I like Phoebe Snow's voice. Oh my, I love me some Phoebe Snow. But it's just, that's a damn good song, right? And so, but some guys, man, they just got that. They got it going on. The rest of us guys got to go. Fuck! I wish I could sing like that. Johnny Gill, get out of here. You got me singing. My 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 my. You so look good tonight. And yeah, I try to mimic it, but you know, some guys just, they just sing. You're like, damn, motherfucker, I got a good voice. You get the fuck on up out of here. <laughs> and then there's Russell Thompson Jr., there's Bobby DeBarge, right? Girls go, woo, right? And not everybody can sing like Johnny Wilder. That's hard. It's not hard. It's not, it's hard. It's hard for us to try to do it, but it's not hard for him. It's easy. <laughs> motherfucker, you just <laughs> like with me with sports. You know, and all my link telling me, you know, Earl, it's, it's, it's easy. It's, okay. <laughs> no, really, it's not hard at all. <laughs> no, I just watch it on TV and go, oh, I like the way Gil Sayers do that. And then go outside and within, a, you didn't even have to, I just mimic it and I could do it. Okay. That's how talented of an athlete I, I was. Um, I still got some shadows of memories of shimmy, shimmy, cocoa bop. Cause you guys still shimmy the cocoa bop. I just can't run faster than anybody else on the planet and then jump higher than anybody when I need to. You know, when I was young, I could, but I realized you don't want to do it too much because you've got to go up in the air, you got to land and they will try to hurt you <laughs> and they will hurt you. Okay. And because you will embarrass them. It's like, it's only necessary. It's like, oh, damn, that was, it. Was, that a, that, was that a damn near cheetah attack? Is that panther tried to get me? And that's the type of person I am. You know, that's a wolf pack, you know. And when you need it, you use it. But you, you, if you're smart enough, you go, okay, you could get really bad hurt trying to get in there. And like animals, okay? Animals will size up a situation and go, <laughs> it ain't worth it. You try to eat that cat, she's too big, and it'll, you know, it could end up disabling me and killing me, and I'll be somebody else's meal in a day. And I'm just not trying to do that. I'm trying to get old and die and get back when I need to, not because I got an ego problem, right? We need to get out and vote. You don't need to get out and vote, motherfuckers. You need to elect a little Lord's prayer and pull your head out of your ass. Hey, not for long, not for long. NFL, right? All these assholes on TV telling everybody to vote. Yeah. I like to live the Lord's Prayer. Stop being a cuntilingus face. November 5th. <laughs> on November 5th, I'm going to sit right here on this couch. I don't even think I'll turn on the fucking TV. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to hear it because I don't care. Just like I don't want to get a job for NASA and have linguistics to spy in your bedroom and then sell your um, sexual intercourse on video recordings to perverts. Hey, is that Pete Townsend's computer? Do you guys understand? Who are you? Who, 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 who? Pretending to be something you're not for money. Okay, is insane. Okay. Something you're not. Are you a human? All we want is a little respect. Well, then be a human being and get the respect human beings deserve from other human beings. Otherwise, don't expect respect. Because you're pretending to be something you're not for money. Ooh, take the money and run. Ooh, Lord. You know. And on those commercials, you can tell they like Yvette Harold sitting there confessing, unhinged and unfit, even for Congress. <laughs> it's like you should say, if it says unhinged and unfit, you should say especially for Congress. Okay. But she doesn't have the people on her thing don't say that. They say unhinged and unfit, even for Congress. It's like, so there's criminals in Congress, but this guy's even worse than the rest of us. Okay. <laughs> I see what you're saying. 
<laughs> this man has no moral values at all. <laughs> That's what she's saying. <laughs> Unhinged and unfit, even for Congress. It's like, shouldn't it be especially for Congress? Technically, if Congress was like myself and the apostles, yes, but Congress is not. You cannot elect people through a money contest and expect them to act like the, the Messiah and his disciples. He's right. Of course I'm right. <laughs> so you got all these people who's like, what? So, and what was the other one they had? I can't remember. But it was like, God dang, these people are insane. They will tell you straight up just how fucked up they are. Like you guys all sitting there watching this asshole who owns the Dallas Cowboys run around in trucks tearing up the surface of the planet, and you have to pay lots of make-believe money to do so to be an asshole like him. And it's like, yeah, okay, save 2000 Money's not real, okay? But that earth you that truck is treading upon is, okay? And that earth that truck is treading upon can grow uh, grain, for food for children, okay? And you got all these people sitting there, you know, go to Western Tech. It's like, do you really need to be an excessive compulsive mechanic for excessive compulsive people that get in their vehicles and use them when they don't need to use them? Okay, if you have a vehicle. It's like I was thinking last night about it when they had the stuff on the news and I was like drunk driving. It's like if you have a vehicle that you need to do things in and you get drunk and you drive in it, we simply just take your vehicle away and you're not responsible anymore for using that truck to do that. You can't do what you need to do. We'll find somebody else that needs to do it, that will do it, that's responsible, that won't drive in a vehicle. You've forgiven debt and trespass. You don't need a car. So if you earn that responsibility and that privilege of driving because it needs to be done, well, then to maintain that privilege, you have to do it responsibly, right? That's not that hard. See, something Martin Hendrick doesn't understand. Nell Domenji, she's just as dumb as he is. <laughs> Stupid, they have brain damage. Okay. These people are, they're, they're not healthy to be a healthy person, to have a good immune system, you have to be immune to linguistical, egotistical bullshit, okay? But if you're not immune to bullshit, you become bullshit and then you're unhealthy, okay? If you have compost heaps and things like that and you're doing things like that, but if you store stuff and use chemicals to dissolve the toxic waste from what you're doing, stuff like that, you're unhealthy, you can have all the money in the world and have a, the biggest, most successful corporation in the, in the history of mass destruction. You can't care about anybody, and so you can't be health care. Okay, guys, let's load this one up. We'll get back to work because, gosh damn it, evil people are more stupid than stupid people. That's why we have stupid people keeping evil in business. Sucks, don't it? Of course it does. <laughs> all right.